when the top kill procedure to stop the BP oil disaster from getting worse was first announced. BP officials gave it a 60 or 70 percent chance of success. Unfortunately, it was clear by Saturday night that the top kill procedure was just the latest failure in a long line of failed attempts to plug the leak at the Deepwater Horizon rig. Well, after three full days of attempting top kill, we have been unable to overcome the flow from the well, so we now believe it's time to move on to the next uh, of our options. Next of our options include a second shot at that whole containment dome thing. They're now calling it cut and cap, cutting the 21-inch kinked riser pipe with a, saw that, with a saw that is studded with industrial diamonds. Great saw, unfortunate image for BP. Uh, after the cut happens, uh, BP is attempting to cap the pipe with a containment dome uh, and to divert the oil to a ship on the surface. Now, of course, if they are able to cut the pipe but not cap it, they may have widened the opening of the pipe and potentially increased the volume of oil spilling into the Gulf by up to 20%. Problem not solved. But let's just say this cut and cap thing they're trying right now works. The cutting, the capping, all goes according to plan. A man-made disaster addressed with man-made techniques. Then nature comes along. Today is the official start of hurricane season. If a big storm were to hit the sh in the region where a ship was uh, receiving diverted oil from the containment dome, that ship would have to unhook itself from that containment dome and get out of the storm's way. The dome would hopefully stay put during the storm, but at that point we'd be back to the oil just leaking into the sea freely again. And that brings us back to square one, stopping the leak, not just diverting the oil. From the start, BP and the government have told us that the light at the end of the tunnel, the very last fail-proof rescue would be these relief wells that BP started drilling in early May. Yes, the wells would take about three months to finish. Yes, the process has been described as hitting a dinner plate from two miles away. Yes, oil would continue to spill into the Gulf until August. They have to dig deeper than the well itself and then intercept the oil flow beneath the seabed. But, 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 but at the very least, we, we, we know those relief wells will work, right? All hail the relief wells. Uh, you're looking at uh, potentially 90 days before you ultimately get to uh, what is the ultimate uh, solution here, and that's a relief well. The ultimate solution is to drill a relief well. Well, the backstop, and always the backstop, will be the relief well in August. There's no doubt that the ultimate solution is a relief well. We always knew that the relief well was the permanent way to close this. The ultimate solution, the backstop, the permanent way to stop this. After the 1979 Ixtoc oil spill, the same relief well techniques were employed as the ones that BP is using today because oil disaster response technology hasn't advanced much in 30 years. The Ixtoc relief well solution took nine months. Last year's Montara spill off the northwest coast of Australia proved similarly vexing. The first four attempts at a relief well there failed. It was only attempt five that succeeded with a relief well there. One of the failed attempts there started a fire that destroyed one of the drilling rigs on site. Today, the president-elect of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists said for the BP oil disaster, it is, quote, almost a certainty that the initial attempt at the relief well will be a failure. To intercept the damaged well, he said, quote, what you're doing is trying to intersect a well bore that is probably roughly a foot across with another well that is about a foot across. It would be like winning the lottery to get it on the first shot. So when you hear relief wells described as the ultimate solution to the BP disaster, the word ultimate really just means it's the last thing we know how to do. It's our ultimate try at stopping this. It's not like it's easy or a sure bet. If it fails, if nothing works, then presumably we just wait. We wait for the borehole to collapse or for the well to finish itself off by gushing all its oil to the point where the pressure drops. If it sounds like even the ultimate solution isn't really a surefire solution, you are starting to get the idea of just how disastrously unsafe underwater drilling is now and always has been. Joining us now is NBC News Chief Environmental Affairs Correspondent Ann Thompson, who joins us again from southern Louisiana. Ann, thank you very much for being back on the program. Hi, Rachel. So relief wells have been described to us as the sure bet here. Uh, it, it, does that understate how hard it is to get the relief well idea right? 
Well, I don't think anybody anybody who knows anything about relief wells has knows this is very, very difficult to do. Um, but it's the one thing they know that does work. And you have to remember that with Top Kill and with that giant four-story containment dome and with trying to activate the blowout preventer at the very beginning of this, all the different techniques that they have tried, and now even with this slice and cap, um, technique. These have all been truly real life exper experiments that we are watching while the relief well is drilled. That is the one thing, as I said, they know that works because essentially it, it is a bottom kill. Remember with the top kill, how they were throwing mud into the top of the well and in an effort to hold the pressure of the oil back and then they were going to cement it. With the relief well, what they do is they drill down to the bottom of the well and it is is there that they put in the heavy drilling mud and then they follow it with cement and that is a technique that they know works the problem as you said is you know one person is compared it to finding a needle in a haystack you are drilling in this case you're going to go more than three miles down and you were trying to find this this well that's about the size of a dinner plate and it's very difficult to do the only advantage they have in doing this is that they know the geology from the first well that they drilled. The other thing that has happened, Rachel, is because it is so difficult, the Obama administration ordered BP not just to start one relief well, but to drill a second one as well in case they don't make it the connection with the first relief well. And speaking on, on June 1st at the start of hurricane season, in the event of a hurricane in this region, what happens if, say, the relief well is still being drilled? What happens if that slice and count containment dome is still hooked, to a sh hooked up to a ship out in the Gulf sucking up the oil and a hurricane comes along? They have to move people off the rigs. I mean, that is just absolute protocol here in the Gulf for the oil industry. They have to keep their people safe. And so it would slow the whole process down and delay it even further. Now, the good news about the first relief well is that BP says it's about 10 days ahead of schedule. It is, it is they've done all the vertical drilling and now they're at the point where they're doing the horizontal drilling and it is about 12,000 feet down and it has to go 18,000 feet down so it's 10 days ahead of schedule which is good because if there is a tropical depression if there is a, even a hint of a tropical storm or a hurricane all work will have to stop because they'll have to bring the people to shore until the storm passes and we're about to head back down uh, to the Gulf region uh, just because we feel like we want to get closer to this story again. We've already taken mm -hmm. one trip down there. Having spent these last few weeks there reporting, do you feel like people in the region share sort of stated optimism from the powers that be about the relief wells? Is there any optimism left? No, I don't think there's any optimism left here, Rachel. Um, people here, they know the relief well is is the tried and to, true technique here, in large part because many of these people, not only do they make their lives from the fishing industry here, but many of them have worked on rigs in the course of their lives. Um, but I think when you come down here, what you will find are people who are really resigned to the fact that this is going to be a very long crisis. And even once they get that well plugged, when that day comes, it is still going to be months and years before this region ever fully recovers from what's happened. NBC News Chief Environmental Affairs Correspondent Ann Thompson. As always, Ann, thank you very much. Take care, Rachel. Thanks.